Now, God's blessings, we're going to talk more about God's blessings. So God's blessings are abundant and multifaceted, encompassing every aspect of our lives, um, the spiritual part of our lives, but also the physical part of our lives. Um, we're going to explore this morning a collection of Bible verses that I put together to speak about God's blessings. Um, and these verses that I've got were meant to, to hopefully inspire you and encourage you and remind you of the goodness and the faithfulness of an almighty, loving God. Whether you're seeking gratitude for the blessings you've received or praying for God's favor in a specific area, these verses will serve as a reminder of the abundant blessings that flow from God's loving hand. Oh, and Pastor Carter, Miss Carter, hi from you guys down in Florida in your Speedos sunbathing with, with Austin goes. <laughs> we love you. See you later. Um, I hope that you get uplifted. I hope that uh, we're reminded of the immeasurable blessings that surrounded all of us through this journey that's led us to the age that we are today to get to the church. Um, so we're going to start with Deuteronomy 28.2. And it says, All these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. This verse explains that God's promise to bless and overtake those who obey his commands. These blessings are not just physical or material, but can also include spiritual blessings such as joy, peace, salvation, and prosperity. Now the key in this is that shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of God. Now a lot of people, they, they do want to hear God talk. They want so badly to get that feeling that God's talking to them. You ever prayed and you got chills or the hair stood up on your arms? That's the Holy Spirit telling you something. Or you knew you weren't supposed to do something. How come my eyes went directly to Mitch? I'm kidding. Am I kidding, Mitch? No. <laughs> But we, we think about these things, and we know what God's answer is. But we want to push our will away from God and do what we think is best and override what God's uh, uh, aspect of our life or an opinion of what our life is supposed to be. That gets us in trouble. If you ask for something and God answers it, it doesn't mean you're going to get the answer you wanted. You've just got to keep praying and hoping that his will, which is incredible, will supersede anything beyond imagine of what we want for our own lives. Does God bless people? Everybody in this room's already been blessed today. You woke up. Statistically, there's like 160,000 people in the world that didn't. Consider yourself blessed. You woke up, which means you still have a chance. You have a chance to make God laugh. You've got a chance to do better for yourself. You've got a chance to do better for your family. You've got a chance to make an impact. And I've never known a successful person that has ever woken up in the morning and thought, well, successful enough. They always strive for more, for more, for more especially the people that claim to be that C-word Christian. Because they know if they continue to put forth the effort, if they continue, importantly, give God the glory and the praise, because He deserves it. If we give God all that glory and praise, He will reward us. Everybody in here believe that God's not a liar? Raise your hands. If you believe that God's not a liar, then you have to believe what I'm saying. Because the Bible says that God will reward us. It's you. It's you out there that put yourself above God and then wonder where the blessing went. Well, the blessing went exactly where it should have been. Right down the toilet. Because you... Was that a very good animation of a toilet? Because you didn't obey God. You wanted it your way now no matter what. 
instead of listening to what God wanted for you. And that that's goodbye. Thank you for coming. No. Psalm 67, 6. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. This verse expresses that the belief that God blesses and provides for his people by giving them resources and food to sustain, to sustain them. It also acknowledges that all blessings come from God and that it is important to give thanks and praise to him for his provisions. Justice, big word. It is quintessentially important. He's over there doing this. To give God all praise and all glory. Somebody asked me once, they said, well, it doesn't seem like God's doing much lately. Oh, God's doing a whole lot more than you think he is. He's just waiting for you to fully grasp what he's trying to do. For some people that are getting blessed right now, that's just the opening of the door for what's coming. Because this, that explosion of prosperity that the Bible promises us, that is coming. You just have to stay true to your faith and true to your love of God. And I've said this a hundred times, just get over yourself. God's got a bigger plan. But God can put that plan right here in the palm of your hand. But if you're not willing to go out and do what it takes and implement God's plan in your life, he might as well just turn his hand over and let that blessing get poured on somebody else because you've just abused the blessing that God was going to send, send to you. Amen? And we all know people that have done that. We all know people that sit back and they'll go, man, I could have, I could have, I, <coughs> I'm trying not, not to raise my voice. I could have, I could have. And then the next guy that's next to him, they go, well, you could have, but you didn't, but I did, and look where I'm at. There's the coulda, woulda, shouldas, right? Don't be one of them. Be the one that picked up God's blessing and not only accepted it, but ran with it. Amen? Matthew 5.5 5. Blessed are the meek, shall they, for they shall inherit the earth. Jesus teaches that blessings are not necessarily about material or physical wealth, but can also come through spiritual qualities such as meekness, humility, and gentleness. Those who embody these traits will receive blessings even if they do not possess worldly possessions. God blesses people differently. God can bless people. See, I wasn't blessed to be able to sing or play. If God had to rely on music coming out of this mouth and out of these hands, the world would be humming. <laughs> because there would be no music to be had. But see, here's the thing. I know that. So I put my effort into something else that God's blessed me with. I can preach a little bit. I can reach people a little bit. I, I can get things done a little bit. And for those, I take that blessing from God, and I try to run with it, and then I implement other things with that. And I try to bless people with that. And that's how you have to take your blessings from God. Take each blessing and run with it, and then try to implement something else to make that blessing better. But see, that requires you to have initiative. That requires you to be willing to step out on that ledge and go, you know what, for better or worse, I know God's got me. And for better or worse, I'm going to take this chance. And I'm going all in on God. See, here's the thing. I'm going to ride for the brand. I'm going to ride for the brand. And my brand starts with a big G, a big O, and a big D. And I'm going to ride that God brand to the dirt. I'm going to ride that God brand until I get to the kingdom of heaven and God says, well done, good and faithful service. But I will ride the brand. Amen? Proverbs 10.22 The blessing of the Lord makes rich, and He adds not sorrow with it. This verse emphasizes that the blessings of the Lord are true riches because they come with no sorrow or negative consequences. Wealth that is gained through immoral or unethical means on the other hand, often brings sorrow and emptiness. Again, if God is blessing you today, consider that pure joy, like the Bible says, pure joy, that God has reached His hand down upon you, 
and He's blessed you. Consider it pure joy that you're one of the ones that God decided to be chosen with. You're one of the ones that God decided that I'm going to do this with. You're the one that God said, I'm going to let you get your giddy up on for God, but I will continue the blessing as long as you bless me in return. How do you bless God? Faith, 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 faith. It's better to give than to receive. Never underestimate the power of prayer to God. Never underestimate what it is to tell God thank you. The Bible says that God is a jealous God. It emphasizes that. That God is a jealous God. God does not want to bless you so that you could go out to the world and go, look what I have, look what I have. What happened to Nebuchadnezzar when that happened? He spent seven years eating hay and, and grass out in the field, and he had everything. Don't be a modern-day Nebuchadnezzar. Be a modern-day you. Be a warrior for Christ. Be a warrior for God. Grab that shield that says, I follow God, and this blessing is going to come with me forever, and nobody's going to take it from me. I'm anointed by this blessing. I'm going to do nothing to disappoint Almighty God, and I'm going to spread this wealth. I'm going to spread this knowledge. I'm going to spread this blessing to everybody out there that wants to hear it and receive it. If you do that, good God Almighty, you have no option but to succeed in every single thing that you do. You'll beat your illness. You'll beat your, you'll beat your, your degradation in your life. You'll beat every burden that you have to death and God will raise you up from the ashes and then you will say, look what God did. <laughs> Proverbs 10.22 The blessing of the Lord makes rich and He adds no sorrow. Did I just do that? And He makes no... I did, didn't I? Did I just do that? I'm gone. Proverbs 84. I know a lot of you guys are going, about time you understood it. <laughs> Proverbs 84.11 For the Lord is a sun shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does He withhold from those who walk uprightly. This reminds us that God is both a protector and giver of blessing. He freely bestows favor and honor on those who walk in righteousness, righteousness, ensuring that they have everything they need to follow His and purpose for their own lives. God is the sun and the shield, but God also is terror and wrath. God's all. The Bible tells us that God is omnipotent. That He's the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning, everything. God is pain. God is sorrow. God is tears. God is joy. God is every single emotion that there is. God gives us these things. God gives us the shield to beat every wrathful thing in our lives. He gives us the shield to beat any illness or the sick, sickness. He gives us the shield to defeat any disparity that we have in our lives, any depression, any sadness, any prison, any jail. There is no jail and no prison that can shackle a servant of an almighty God. It's just a chain. That's all it is. They can't take your manhood or womanhood. They can't take your life. They can't take your true freedom. Because the freedom starts and ends with accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. See, man can't take that or steal that from you. Only you can. So rise up from disparity. Rise up from the pain. Rise up from the agony. Rise up from every depression and concern that you have in your life and stand tall and say, Almighty God, You're the reason why I'm here. You're the reason why I'm prospering. You're the reason for it all. I give my life to You, not part of the time, not 24, 23 and a half hours a day at the time. I give You all of me, all of the time. I give You all the praise, all the worship, and everything that's good in my life, God. I know it's because of You and everything that's bad in my life is because I made a bad choice and wasn't listening to you. Pray that God gives you the discernment to know what's good and bad in your life so that you can stand tall with the armor of God and beat every demon and beat every ill course that comes your way and tell God that He's King still sitting on that mighty throne. Amen.
James 1.17 Every good gift, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no vacation or shadow due to change. This verse makes clear that every good and perfect gift comes directly from God, explicitly. God, He is unchanging and does not withhold His blessings from His children. He gives them freely as they seek His will. But here's the key. you got to seek His will. And once you get His will, you got to continue moving forward with His will. And once you have His will, you've got to make sure that you expand on what God's blessed you with. you got to make sure that you make God proud. you got to make sure that you don't question the authority of the Most High. you got to make sure that you ride that horse to the ground until God says, it's done. It's finished. Paul tells us we're in a marathon. We're not in a sprint. If it's not going right right now, just give it two or three seconds in prayer and watch everything change. Watch your life go from despair to joy. Watch you go from debt to prosperity. Watch you got, watch you go from have not to have plenty. But the key is you got to put it on the foot of the cross. You got to give it to Jesus Christ. You got to praise an almighty God and you have to do it with an unfledgling heart knowing that that is exactly where your blessing came from, and that is exactly where your next blessing's coming from. Amen? I'm tired. Philippians. It's about it, Austin. Philippians 4.9. Philippians. Philippians 4.19. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. If I keep preaching, I'm going to sound like Mike Tyson in about three minutes. <laughs> and, I, and you know, the thing was that, that I really thought I hit him with a good hook, and he didn't. This verse, verse teaches that God will provide all we need according to his riches and glory. When we trust in him and have faith that he will meet our needs, we can rest assured that He will do according to His wisdom and timing. Here's the thing. His wisdom, His timing, His deeds, His work, His time, His time. God will give you blessings. What are you going to do with that blessing? If something negative happens while you're still receiving a blessing, are you going to be mad at God for the negative when all the good blessings are still being bestowed on you? But one thing doesn't work out? I uh -uh, No. Because if you do... You are putting a bad taste in God's mouth. You are not treating Him like God. See, God wants to be treated with reverence. Anybody know what reverence is? There's people that have reverence for their children. They have reverence for their spouse. Uh-uh. You're to have reverence for one. And that is our Father in Heaven, the Maker of all. Because if it wasn't for Him, you wouldn't be here listening to the old cat in the cowboy hat this morning. You wouldn't be in this... <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be inside this church praising God. You just wouldn't. The alternative would be you'd be sitting sad. You'd be somewhere with your tail between the legs, sitting on the pity pot going, why me, why me, why me? Why don't you try God and go, it's Him, it's Him, it's Him, and let the prosperity in your life flow. Give it to God. Make God smile. Do that for a change and watch your life become new. How do I know that to be true? It's in the Bible. Psalms 34.8. This is the last one. That's about all I got, guys. 34.8. Oh, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in Him. This verse encourages us to experience God's goodness and blessings firsthand by seeking refuge and safety in Him. When we seek His help and protection, we can experience the fullness of His blessings and goodness in our lives. Here we go again. Here we go again. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in Him. God of all high. God of everything. Takes refuge in Him. Don't take refuge in man. If God gives you a blessing, again, expand on it. Work your tail off. The one thing that you should want to do more than anything in your life is to make God proud of you. Don't worry about what your husband and wife thinks. See, 
What they think isn't going to get you in heaven. What you think, what your actions are, and how you go through life is how you're going to get into heaven. See, here's a fact. I'm going to lose my voice. Here's a fact. You can't buy your way into heaven. You can't cheat your way into heaven. You can't talk your way into heaven. You can't manipulate your way into heaven. And you can't ride the coattails of somebody you love into heaven. You get to heaven by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You get to heaven by doing the absolute will of God. You get to heaven by making God smile. You get to heaven by not just being a good person. I guarantee you right now today, there are a lot of good people in hell. You can't just be good. There's a criteria with it. You've got to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That is non-optional. It's a criteria. If you want to see the pearly gates of heaven and walk down that pavement of gold, then you have got to get on your knees, repent your sins, and get to the cross. Because the only way of salvation starts and ends at that almighty cross. You may think that you can get over on God. You can't. Because about the time that you think you got God figured out, He changes the question in your life. He tries to bestow upon you more faith. And then your guilt sets in. But I didn't do this. But I didn't do that. That's when you almost got it. I know that sounds stupid, doesn't it? When guilt eats you alive, that's when you almost got it. You know why? Because you're, on, you're finally understanding your own sin. And until you understand your sin, you can't fix it. But once you fix it, once you know it, then you can repent it. And once you've repented it and accepted that old boy up there as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you got it. You've just rolled a seven consecutive. And you're on your way to heaven. You are on your way to see the Maker. But until then, you have got to saddle up. You have got to get right with God. You have got to take the blessings that God gave you and absolutely, fully expand on those blessings, knowing that if He gave you this, He's wanting to give you everything else. You just got to do the work. You got to put in the effort. You've got to put in the time. And you can never doubt what God has in store for your life. And until next Sunday, you should.